I guess tonight we're going to kick out, kick off, kick out everybody, kick off uh, the summer series at 737. Uh, guys, every Wednesday night of the month of July, uh, we're going to allow students and leaders to come up, share the word of God. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of like their service to you, if you will. So guys, here's the deal. This isn't my youth ministry. It's our youth ministry. And uh, you know, for this month, we're going to be highlighting just a few people with the great gifting to preach the Bible. Uh, man, they've, they've chosen to use their gifting for Jesus. And so I've met with each of them uh, over, over the past months. I've spoken into them. I've prayed with them. I've heard their heart. And you know, one of those people that I've been meeting with and really gotten to know and really grown to admire and respect is a young man named Cale Erickson. Uh, Kill Erickson, he's one of the funniest, uh, laid back, and tallest, uh, and whitest people I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> but you know what really sets Kill Erickson apart in my eyes? You know what, honestly guys, you know what really sets him apart in my eyes? Is this, is that Kill is a genuine, in my opinion, he's a genuine, authentic Christ follower with real struggles and real problems just like any of us. And so I say this about him because Kill doesn't think of himself better than anyone else as he comes up tonight. Uh, but I'll tell you this, that young man has spent time with God. When no one else was watching, when no one else even knows about it, he alone, God alone in his room, set down the Nintendo, set down, uh, the t turned off the TV, turned off his phone, and God alone with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and said, Jesus, I want you to use me. I want you to take these giftings that you've given to me and I want to give them back to you. God, would you do something radical? Would you use me? Whatever that looks like. And so since Kale's been praying these bold, dangerous prayers, they've lived out in his public life. So again, guys, what you do in your private life ends up in your public life. And so with that said, um, tonight I believe that and he believes that he has a specific message for you and I tonight from God. Who wants to hear from God tonight? All right, all right. Who wants to know what God has for him? One more time. Okay, everybody here, great. Because uh, tonight, guys, it, it, it's, it is about us, but tonight it's going to be about God. Tonight we, we want to see, man, God, what are you saying to me? Specifically me. Not to my girlfriend, not to my friend, not to the dude across. God, what are you saying to me? Right? And so the Bible talks a lot about giving honor where honor is due. And so we want to honor. When we honor others, they, God honors us. And so tonight I wanted you to help me honor and welcome uh, Kale Erickson, guys. Come on, y'all give honor. Y'all show him some loving. Yeah! Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Pastor Alex, for that. That was very kind, very nice. It was awesome. Thank you. So if you didn't catch that, my name is Kale Erickson, right? Usually you'll see me up there playing those drums, hitting them as hard as I can, even though they're electric and that doesn't really matter but I hit them as hard as I can because for a long time and I mean it still is don't get me wrong but that was like my passion that was my ministry right playing drums that's how God used me was through playing drums but recently I felt like God was telling me you know I'm going to use you in different areas not just drums not that you're not going to still not do that but you know I'm going to put you in different places that might make you a little uncomfortable so here I am <laughs> so yeah I'm 17 years old I've been going here to this church, Glad Tidings, for 17 years now. So that's the whole life. Whole life I've been here at this church. I've been going to camps, conventions, and there's a big theme that you hear whenever you're going to camps, and conventions, and church every week. It's about prayer. You've heard about prayer, right? It's a lot of, yes. Man, you guys are, you're good. Awesome. So yeah, I've heard about prayer a lot too. It happens almost everywhere you go. They're like, you need to pray. You need to pray like every day. And sometimes it makes it feel like, yeah, you're supposed to pray like every day, all day, all the time, because that's what we do. We're Christians. We pray. And it's like, all right, well, I don't Sometimes you don't even really want to pray, right? Can you be honest? Sometimes it's like, I'd rather sit here and watch TV than go pray. And sometimes it's like, it's kind of hard to understand what to pray. And like you've, heard, tell me if you've ever heard this. Prayer is just a conversation with God right? It's just talking. Yeah. So sometimes like you hear that and you're like, all right, cool. Just conversation. Just con yeah, we're just friends. So it's like, all right, God. So how, how's the weather? <laughs> I guess, I guess you had a pretty big part in that, huh? Think, <laughs> think the saints are going to win it all this year? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. What am I going to say to God? I don't know. But look, prayer is important. Prayer keeps you close to God. So in light of that, we're going to pray tonight's service. So God, I pray that you would just be here with us, 
that your presence is here, Lord. We thank you for that. God, I pray that tonight you would just have your way and that we'd get to be closer to you. Amen. So, how many of you have ever used a handrail before? You know, like, you know what a handrail is, right? Like, only three of you? I mean, you've ever walked downstairs before, right? You're walking with a handrail and you're like, oh, don't let me fall, don't let me fall. I mean, I do that at least, especially when I tie up. But anyways, so let's look at handrail keeping you up. Let's look at this spiritually because we're in church. We like to look at things spiritually. That's how we do it here, spiritual. So Jesus is like a handrail. And so like, look, you're walking along. Like say I'm walking here. This is me, two fingers. I'm walking along here and it's like, oh yeah, I love, love Jesus. You know, he's cool. He's cool. I like Jesus. Yeah, you know, oh, if you look at my Instagram bio, it says God first. You know, sometimes I go to church and uh, no, I don't really raise my hands. I don't like to do that. But you know, yeah, I'm walking along. And then one day life is just kind of like, and it knocks you off. And like, I can't really illustrate that very well, but it knocks you off. And you don't know what's going on. You just got hit because that happens in life. Life will come and hit you. Maybe school got tough. Maybe you fell back into that sin that you've kind of been struggling with. But look, life has got to hit you hard. And you're going to get knocked down if you don't have a handrail to hold you up. Because if there's a handrail, right, stuff can come and hit you all day long. And you're not going to get knocked over because you're holding on to it. That's what Jesus does for us. Even when we're getting hit, even when we're, Satan's trying to come attack us and knock us down, Jesus is there holding us. In Isaiah 41, 13, it says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. So when those attacks are coming, when it feels like I'm about to be knocked down and it's all about to be over, just remember that it says, Do not fear, I will help you. God's there with you. He's holding you up. So for these kind of things to happen, you have to know Jesus, right? I mean, you can't just say, oh, Jesus is my handrail. And it's like, oh, I don't really know Jesus. And so to know him, you have to pray. Prayer is one of the most important things you can do to keep you from falling away. If you claim to be a follower of Christ, then you have to pray. Because without prayer, you're not going to know God. So I kind of said it before, prayer is a conversation. Back to that little cliche there. But it really is. It's just a conversation. So like picture it like this. If I went up to Matt and I was like, hey Matt, how's it going? Actually, and this, I don't know your name. What's your name? My name is Job. Okay, cool. So I want to be like your best friend ever in the whole entire world. We're going to be BFFFs. We're just got to be together. I'm going to know everything about you. All right, fist pound. We're going to be really close. And then I'm like, and I never talked to him again. We're not going to be very close, right? Oh. <laughs> We're not going to be friends because I never talked to him anymore. I don't know him. So why do we think this is an exception with God? We get saved at church camp, or we get saved here at church, and we're like, oh, Jesus, oh, he's good. He's my best friend. And then we're like, back to everyday life, and you're like, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind, I don't really want that. But you got to talk to God. Praying is really one of the easiest things to forget. It's kind of annoying almost. It's like it's the most important thing, and it's the most easiest thing to forget. But... Like when life gets going, you know, you just kind of forget. Sometimes I'll find myself going to sleep at night, lay my head down with my little pineapple pillow, and I'm like, I, wait a minute, I didn't pray today. I, I didn't pray yesterday. <laughs> I only prayed the day before because that was Sunday, and you kind of have to pray when you're at church. It's like, why haven't I prayed? Of course I want to get close to God, but I just didn't do it. But look, sometimes you have to go out of your way to pray. Like with your friend here, I mean, does your conversations with your friends start with them saying the first word every time? If so, you probably don't have that great of a friendship. That's probably more of them annoying you. Sometimes you have to go and talk to your friend. You have to go and say the first word. You know, for a relationship to work, you really have to be in it. And for your relationship with God to work, you have to be disciplined in that prayer. That's easier said than done, but trust me, it's essential with your relationship to God. If you want to serve God, you got to know what he's all about. We have to know him by talking to him. So in 1 John 5.14, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God hears what you're praying. God hears you when you're talking to him. He's not ignoring you. He's there and he's listening. And you can have confidence in knowing that, that your prayers aren't just kind of going out and it's like, ah, there it is. Oh. No, God is hearing that. And he loves it when we pray. 
because we have to get close to God so that he will reveal himself to us. We see this in the Bible a lot. I got two little scriptures here about this. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Just go near to God, right? Just go near to him. You got to get close to him anytime you pray. Prayer's not going to pull you further away or anything. Prayer is good. You got to get close to God. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. That's what it's really about right there, with your whole heart. You have to be all in. You have to be real with God. You can't just say you serve God and you love God without knowing him. Because God has called us to do great things. And if we don't know him, then we're not going to know what those great things are. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Excuse me one second. Just a minute. Just talk amongst yourselves. I wish I was a ventriloquist. Could have done some cool thing there. So, God's calling us to do great things. One of those great things is to be a light in this world. So check this out. John 1, 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Light shines in the darkness, but darkness has not understood it. See, Jesus is the light. When you get born again, Jesus gives you a new life. That's why we call it born again. It's a new life. It's a new light. So when you get to know Jesus, you too have that light in you. Because Jesus is in you. If Jesus is light, guess what? The light's in you. So let's look at John 8:12. It says, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light has got to overcome darkness in, in any situation. No matter what, light will always win. It's so like kind of back to that uh, story there. When, you know, you're going to sleep with your pineapple pillow. You remember that all. Okay, so like you're going to sleep. And tell me if this ever happens to you. You're like going to sleep, going to sleep, going to sleep, going to sleep. And then it's like, I got to use the bathroom. <laughs> or I'm thirsty. I got to get up and get a drink. It happens all the time, almost every night with me. And I'm like, oh, now I got to get up. I'm all comfortable here. I'm all wrapped up. I'm getting warm up. But now it's like, I got to get up. I can't go to sleep like this. So you get up. And you're like, kind of make your way through your room. And I don't know if y'all are like me, but my room's kind of messy. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I have like shoes, clothes, you know, just whatever in the room. So it's dark, right? You can't really see where you're going. So you're like, all right, where's the, okay, I'm going through here. And then finally I make my way to my door and open the door. And it's dark in the rest of the house because it's in the middle of the night. But in our house, we have this one little night light, I guess you could say. It's like really tiny. And it kind of helps you see just barely enough so that you can make it to the room you're trying to get to. So you make it to the bathroom and you're like, finally, I'm here after stumbling over all that stuff. And you get in there and you're like, you know what? I don't even really want to turn on the light right now because that's going to hurt. Because I've been so used to this darkness that that's going to hurt whenever I flip on this light. It's going to be like, ah! you get blinded. That happens to me all the time. All right. You know, sometimes you have to go into darkness in this world because the world is dark. Sometimes you got to go to school. I say sometimes. I really mean like every day except for summer. <laughs> It's like part of your everyday life. You have to go to school. Maybe you have a job and you have to go to work and that place is dark. Maybe sometimes your home feels like the darkest place on earth. But remember, John 8, 12, Jesus is the light. And whoever follows him won't have to walk in that. You don't have to be a part of that because you're different, because you have the light. You can be different from the darkness and stand out in it. Because if you have Jesus, you can be a light in all those dark places that this world brings you to. You know, when you go into this world, remember in verse 5 there, it says, those in darkness have not understood it. So sometimes you go and show them uh, the light, and it's like, yeah, we don't really understand that. We don't want to see the light because it hurts, because we like the darkness. We're used to it. But they don't know Jesus. They don't know life, and you have to show them. So I want to tell you guys about um, a guy in the Bible named Paul. Have you ever heard of Paul before in the Bible? He's a pretty popular guy. So this guy Paul was originally known as Saul. We'll get to that in a second. Just a second, real quick. So this guy Paul, flash forward when he was Paul. He was an apostle. This guy Paul was a preacher man. He went around and teached and preached about Jesus. So back in the day there, you know, this is after Jesus was crucified. So it's like going around and telling people about Jesus. It's kind of like today. You're not really got to be that popular. You're not really got to be loved and accepted everywhere you went. But Paul had a calling on his life. So he went and did it instead. So in Acts chapter 16, 23, we see Paul in prison. Now before we read this, I want to set the scene a little bit. Paul and his friend Silas are going to their place of prayer. They're just walking along through this town. They're like, we're going to go to a place of prayer. When the slave girl comes to them 
And see, this slave girl is kind of interesting. She has this spirit in her that helps her predict the future. And remember, she was a slave. So her owners were making money off of her by her spirit that was in her. So it says that she's following them around, you know, blah, 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 yelling at them, saying all these crazy things. And it says it goes on for days. It's not like she was there for 10 minutes. It says it goes on for days. She follows them for days. And so that would be kind of annoying, you know, if that was happening to me. I think I'd be pretty annoyed. And so was Paul. It even says that Paul became greatly annoyed or that he became troubled. And so Paul's just walking along. This girl's just annoying him. And he turns to her and he's like, hey, in the name of Jesus, spirit, leave. And you know what? It says that within the hour, that spirit left. So remember, this girl was a slave. She was owned by people who were making money off of her. Now that spirit's not in her, they're not making money off of her anymore. So they're kind of mad because they're like, great, we don't have a way to make money. Thanks a lot. Who's this guy that did this? Oh, Paul, let's get him. Yeah. So they get together and they're like, let's go get this Paul guy. So they get him and they bring him to like the leaders of this town. And they're like, these guys are telling people about Jesus. You need to throw them in jail. So let's pick it up at verse 23. It says, and they inflicted many blows upon them. They threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. So they got thrown in jail, which I've never been to jail, but I'm going to assume it's not a fun place. And if I ever did get thrown in jail, you know, obviously right now I'd like to think, oh, I'd be fine. But I think I'd be a little angry. I'd be angry with God, just like they, understandably so, could be angry with God. They're just going to a place to pray. And the next thing they know, they're beaten and thrown in jail. But check this out. Verse 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. And look, they weren't just like praying like, God, why are we here? God, get us out of here. It says they were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all those doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. See, when you're in a dark place in this world, and it feels like you're all tied up and whatever it may be, just pray. If you would just go to God and pray, not say, God, I'm in this dark place. God, I'm all tied up. Why is this happening to me? Don't go at it like that. Go at it like, God, you're good. I, I know you know what you're doing. Just worship him and pray. Because, look, it says the bonds were unfastened. Jesus breaks those bonds over you. He doesn't just loosen them a little bit and says, here, I'll make you comfortable. He sets you completely free. Completely free. I mean, they could have got up and walked out of that prison if they wanted to. But look, in verse 27, it says, When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he took out his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. So that's got to be a big shock to this guy who's about to kill himself. <laughs> so he's like, all right, I got to go check this out, obviously. So the guard like gets up, you know, he goes and checks this out. And he's like, wow, they're still here. Why are they still here? And you know what happens next? Something very interesting happens next. Next, Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so this guard that was about to kill himself goes to Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas tell him about Jesus and this guard gets saved. That's pretty crazy. They're in this dark place and here they are <laughs> showing people Jesus. So then what happens after that is this guard is like, wow, this is awesome. Hey, you know what? My house is just around the corner. Let's go tell my whole family about Jesus. And then his whole family goes and gets saved. You know, you can be like Paul and Silas in your school or at your work or at your home. No matter where you are in this world, even if it's a dark place, even if it's not good, you can change it by being the light. And that starts with prayer. Even when you're in a hard spot, God will bring you out of it through prayer. I like there in verse 28 how it says that Paul cried out with a loud voice. No, don't do it. You know, sometimes to make a difference, you got to cry out with a loud voice. You got to stand up for something. You know, other times you don't. Sometimes you just got to sit back and pray. But you're never going to know what you're supposed to do if you haven't been in prayer, if you don't know God. So that prison was a dark place. Quite literally, actually. There was just an earthquake. And remember, it said at about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. So midnight, that's pretty dark, I mean, normally. So there's just an earthquake. I mean, Paul is probably lying there in the rubble. You know, I mean, there's just an earthquake. There's probably dust everywhere. You know, he can't see. And this guard was about to kill himself. The guard was going to kill himself because he couldn't see that Paul and Silas were there. He thought they had gone away. So obviously he couldn't see them because he wouldn't be killing himself if he could see them. 
So it was dark. He couldn't see. So how did Paul know to cry out? I mean, if the guard couldn't see Paul, how could Paul see the guard? He just knew. Because when you have the light in you, you can see things that others don't. You can. God has called us to bring light to this world. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. Don't miss what God's calling you to do. So you might be thinking this is great and everything, but like you said, that guy Paul, I mean, he was, he was a good guy. <laughs> he mean, he, like you said, he wrote the, like most of the New Testament. He was a big preacher. I, you know, he seems like almost he's perfect. God, God used him, obviously, because he's a good guy. God can't use me because I've done things that are wrong. I've done sins that I shouldn't have done. God's not got to use that. But remember, back when I said that Paul was known as Saul, when he was known as Saul, he was the guy who was not exactly saved, we could say. He wasn't exactly a Christian. In fact, he hated Christians. This guy Saul went around persecuting Christians. That was like his one mission in life. His one passion was, you know what? I hate Christians, and I want to persecute them. But for some reason, God was like, you know what? I'm going to use him. That guy that's going around persecuting Christians, I want to change him, and I want to use him. So I can't help but wonder, why did God use Paul to do these things? This guy's a sinner. He could have used anyone else. Anyone else who was good, you know, he could have used them. I mean, think about it. This guy who's persecuted Christians goes on to write about half the New Testament. That's God's word, and he was a sinner. That almost doesn't seem to match up, because God's word is perfect and pure, and it's like, this guy was a sinner. But you know what? It does match up, because God is all about grace and forgiveness. God's all about changing you and making you new. So God isn't looking for someone who's just perfect in every single way. God's looking for someone who's willing. If God uses a sinner like Paul, then he can use you. Don't let anything hold you back from what God is doing. Don't let fear hold you back from praying for someone. Look, I'm probably the worst offender of this. The thought of walking up to someone and praying for them and being like, Jesus loves you, is like, <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, I just play drums. <laughs> I don't got to do that. No. <laughs> but you know what? Some of my biggest regrets in life that I look back on is when Jesus said, hey, go pray for this person. Just be a light. And I was too scared to do it. I just said, no, I just got to stay back here. I'm not going to do that. It's like, what are you afraid of? In Matthew 5.10, it says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if you're afraid of being made fun of, because that's really the worst thing that could happen to you, it's just they make fun of you where they're saying, no, I don't want to hear about Jesus. Guess what? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. If you're being righteous and you get persecuted, yours is the kingdom of heaven. You're still good. All you can do is show people light. All you can do is be light. That's all you can do. Once you have that truth in you, you can just show it to other people. Because if you stand up for Jesus, you've got to stick out a little bit. Because it's not the cool or popular choice anyways, any these days. So, yeah, they make fun of you. Or maybe they get saved. Maybe they get led to Jesus. You can't really live by, like, what you think you should do, what you think you know. You have to live by what you know you know. Which means you got to live by what's in the Bible. you got to live by what God is telling you. you got to know it for yourself. you can't just be like, yeah, uh, I think praying, that sounds about right. Don't just take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Read it for yourself. You know, you have to know it for yourself, and you have to know it in your heart. All you can do is show people the light. It's their choice to accept it or not. Just don't let anything hold you back. Because trust me, you've got to look back in that, and if it's, you let something hold you back from praying for someone, from being a light, you've got to regret it. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. God can use you. There's another guy in the Bible named Moses. So this guy Moses had a pretty interesting life. Uh, before he was even really born, he was supposed to die because babies, boys at that time weren't supposed to be born. They're supposed to be killed. But this guy draws a lottery somehow, and he gets to live. And then, it's kind of a long story, but he gets sent down a river in a basket and gets picked up by Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh was like the ruler of all the land at that time. So being Pharaoh's son, his daughter, daughter's son, I mean, he's grown up a pretty easy life. Right? He's not grown up like the ones that weren't killed, who had to go and build stuff with brick and stone. He had a pretty easy life. So this guy, Moses, he's just walking around one day, and he's looking at his people that he's supposed to be a part of, but he's not. And he's looking at them, and one of them is being beaten. They're being beat up.
by this other person. So Moses is like, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to take a stand. But he kind of takes the wrong stand. <laughs> he goes and kills that person. That's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> don't, don't do that. So he goes and kills this person. And then Pharaoh finds out about it. And he's like, well, I'm going to have you killed then. For killing him, I'm going to kill you. Makes sense, right? So Moses is like, well, I don't want to die. So Moses flees. He goes to this different place. So you've all, no, nah, maybe not all. But there's a story in the Bible about Moses in the burning bush. It's a pretty popular story. It's basically Moses is out there away from that life whenever he's run away. And there's this burning bush. And God comes to him and he's like, hey, come here. Come here. And so he does. He's like, all right, there's this burning bush. I'm going to come up to it, I guess. See what this is. Oh. <laughs> Can I touch it? So he does. And God's like, all right, yes, he's here. And God tells him all these things that he wants Moses to do. He tells him, I want you to go back, and I want you to lead my people out of there because they're in hard times. I want you to be the one to do this. And Moses is like, what? Me? <laughs> no. I'm a murderer, remember? And God's like, yeah, I know. I still want you to do it. And Moses is like, nah, really, no. Don't, don't use me. Use someone else. God is persistent. He's like, no, I'm going to use you. God does these miracles. He shows Moses miracles. And still, after that, Moses was like, nah, really, dude. Uh, <laughs> don't use me. I'm, I'm slow of tongue and speech. I can't talk that well. Use someone else. So God is like, no, I'm the one that gave you that mouth. I'll teach you what to say. I'll be there with you. Just go. Just do it. Moses is like, no, really, please. It even says, if you read about it, this is in Exodus chapter 3 and 4. You can read about it. It says that Moses says, Lord, please send someone else. He really says that. God's sitting here laying out all these plans saying, yeah, you got to do this. You got to lead the people out of Egypt. You know, it's got to be great. And you're going to be the one doing it all. And he's like, send someone else. Thanks. <laughs> cool burning bush. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but you know what? Finally, God's like, God's got to work with him because God has called this guy to do this. So God's like, all right, I'm going to find a way to get you to do this. So God tells him, all right, what about your brother Aaron? He's like, God's like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what to say. You got to tell Aaron what to say, and then Aaron has got to say it. So Moses is like, all right, at least I don't have to do anything that bad. So finally Moses is like, all right, all right I guess I've got to do this now that I have someone with me, now that I'm comfortable-ish. You know, all right, I guess I'll still do it. So Moses does. He goes and does it, and he leads people out of Egypt, just like God said he would. So despite being a murderer, and despite being fearful and doubting what God was telling him to do, God still used him. Because God knows what you're capable of, even if you don't. God knows what he's calling you to do. He's not just picking people randomly and putting them places. God's doing it on purpose. If God's calling you to do something or go somewhere, don't question him because of who you are and what you've done. Thank him for who he's making you. If I could have the worship team come up now. So look, you have to be empty of doubt and empty of fear. God wants us to be an empty vessel so that he can fill us with his love, with his mercy, with his confidence, and with his strength. Because it's not by our own strength, but by God's. When he fills us with those things, it means that we can pour it out onto others. When you're empty of your pride, God can fill you with love, and you can show people love. When you're empty of fear, God can fill you with confidence, and you can have that confidence to go tell people about Jesus. Recently at our house, we had this problem with our sinks and with our pipes. What was happening is we turn on the water and it would just fill up and it would just fill up. It wasn't going through the pipes because what was happening was that it couldn't get through. There was something blocking it in the pipes. It couldn't get through. So don't be like that. Don't let sin be blocking you up. Don't let this world be blocking you up that what God's trying to do can't flow through you. You know, if you kind of look at this like a cup, like, you know, You've all seen a cup before, I'm assuming. So, like, you have a cup. And for me, it's like, I want Dr. Pepper. So I want Dr. Pepper. And I don't really care if it comes in a can or a bottle or if I have to use my own cup. I just want the Dr. Pepper. But you know what? If that cup is dirty, if it's filled up with something else, I don't want to use that. If it's empty, yeah, I'll use that. That's what God's like with us. If you're empty, God can flow through you. God can put what he wants in you. Because when God is flowing through you, you can do anything. We've all heard it before probably. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do anything through Christ. Just be open. 
Notice it says strengthens. God gives us strength to do these things. Do you believe that? Because what you believe, you're gonna be able to tell by what your prayers look like. Are your prayers like, God, why am I here? God, get me out of here. Or are your prayers, God, how can you use me to change this place that I'm in? You gotta have that revealed by what you're praying. It's gotta be revealed by what your actions are. When God tells you to go do something, are you like, no? Or are you like, okay, let's go? Are you empty? What's in your heart tonight? Is it the light or is it something else? When we go through God's strength and not our own, we depend on God because we're weak. We have to depend on him. When you use a handrail, you're depending on that to hold you up, to not let you go. You're depending on it to not break and let, let you fall down. When you're completely dependent on God and you fully put your trust in him, there's no need to be unsure or fearful because God doesn't fail. When it's all in God's hands, yeah, it's God's. It's up to him now, it's not on you anymore. You can trust that God has got this. God will hold you up even when it feels like everything is falling. Just depend on him. What is there to fear when your hope is in the Lord? So if you're depending on yourself, yeah, I'd be scared too. <laughs> because you're, you're not gonna be able to get it done. You have to have Jesus. We have to depend on God to hold us up because without him, we're weak. We need his strength. Remember, with, your, with his strength, you can do anything. And it all starts with prayer. Tonight, if I could have you guys stand up. Tonight, we're just gonna spend a little time in prayer. Maybe just five minutes, maybe just three minutes. I don't know what, there's no really time limit on how much time you have to pray. It's not like, all right, I got a minute, I'm good. You can go on for however long you want, however short you want, just as long as you're talking to God, as long as you're being real with God, when you're going after with your whole heart. That's what it's about, remember? With your whole heart, God will reveal himself to you when you come near him. So if there's anyone here who's like thinking right now, what is this guy talking about? This Jesus, this prayer, you know, that's okay. That's okay that if you don't know what that is. We have a lot of leaders here who are willing to pray with you and who are willing to show you Jesus. So I encourage you, please find one if you want to know more about that. And for the rest of you who maybe just think, yeah, this is sounding cool. I guess he's making us do something now. Yeah, we gotta go pray. Just find somewhere in here. I don't know where, anywhere. Just find somewhere and spend a little time with God because God is willing to change you. God's gotta call you to go somewhere to do something. God's got to give you the light. So whenever I finish praying here, um, you can just go find your place and be with God. So God, thank you for your presence here tonight. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, Lord. I pray that you would change us. I pray that we get closer to you and that we know more of you, God. Lord, I just pray that we don't have to worry and overthink what prayer is. We just can talk to you, God. God, I pray that we can be open and empty tonight so that you can fill us with what you want us to be full of. I pray that we get close to you, Lord, tonight. In Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.